Priti Patel. Thank you. Mr Gerald, um, I want to begin by congratulating my right honourable friend and constituency neighbour from Alden on securing this debate and highlighting um, how badly affected Essex and the east of England has been by this epidemic. And the debate, this debate follows the one that we held here last week as well on the support for British farming. And of course, this is why we are all here, to pay tribute to those whose livelihoods depend upon farming, but also recognising the valuable contribution that they all make. And as has already been said in the debate today, with Christmas fast approaching, there is a significant amount of public interest, and rightly so, in this issue. And of course, whether it's our agriculture or even wider in terms of poultry and other aspects of farming that have been debated so far, this is crucial to Britain. It fills our tables, but it also keeps people employed in this country. This is a challenging and worrying time for our farmers. And as honourable members and right honourable members have already said, um, Essex, East of England and other parts of the country, farmers have been hit heavily, very hard by bird flu. Um, and I do actually want to pay tribute to those farmers. What they're enduring right now is incredibly difficult. Anyone who keeps birds, whether they're large farmers or small holdings or even hobbyists who keep heritage breeds, are now living in fear and the concerns are genuine. They're not even short-term anymore, Sir George. They are long-term with significant impacts. Many already maintain very strong biosecurity measures, and we should make note of that as well because there are strong measures that have been in place, but they've still been infected. But as this strain in particular spreads across the wild bird Sorry. population, we know that the damage now is so severe. In the Whitton constituency, between the 1st of October and the 15th of November, a highly pathogenic av avian flu influenza was detected in poultry in or in captive birds in three premises out of six where this was detected in Essex. And in this case, nearly 50,000 birds have died or been culled as a result in Essex, and around 7,600 in just in the Whitton constituency. Now, members have already heard and discussed the impact, but in my constituency, um, we have one example that I'd just like to highlight, please, Sir George, which is Blackwell's farm in the constituency. It is one of many, many fantastic farms in and around Essex, um, and great businesses as well. And they've been rearing their own free-range poultry and meats for, for many, many years. The farm shop also showcases other local producers. And, of course, this has a knock-on effect in terms of the supply chain and access for other producers as well. So back in October, bird flu was detected on the farm. And I raised this then with the Secretary of State and actually the Minister, and I'm very grateful to the Minister for his diligent response. Within days, thousands of birds were infected <coughs> and died. And those left um, by the time the officials um, arrived from DEFRA were then humanely culled. Throughout that process, of course, this was a devastating time for the, um, for the farm. And we've already heard from right honourable members speak about the processes and the procedures. But first and foremost, there are some very specific issues that have to be addressed, such as the clear lack of information on what other activities on site within the farm that is a running business and a working farm could and could not take place. For local businesses with diverse op operations, they need to factor all of those things in. And this very much became about certainty and clarity from <coughs> DEFRA and the advice in terms of what constitutes as business as usual so that the farm could operate. And I would, of course, welcome the Minister to give feedback on this, and he's heard my, these points being raised before. I'd also like some clarification over the compensation arrangements, which we've heard and have been debated already. Blackwells have received some compensation for approximately around 5,000 of the 7,300 birds affected that were either culled or died. But compensation was not paid in respect of all the birds lost. And, of course, it's the arrangement for compensations. And as the department will know very well, compensation and payments, not only do they have to be on time, they've got to reflect the scale of the damage and the impact of the pandemic on businesses. Now, of course... The farm, along with other businesses, um, will need to know about compensation measures, but also look to review the measures in place around the detail what further support can be given to farms affected to help them get through these tough times. It's not a period of just four to six weeks. This is now becoming a very consistent period that is affecting businesses. And as well as compensation, we have to look at the timescales for the restrictions that are in place. Blackwells now faces 12 months of restrictions on poultry which, as I've stated already, will hamper their ability to get the site up and running, particularly we're planning for not just for now, 
but also for next year and next year's Christmas and all the other business operations they have. It's unclear as to the reasons for these restrictions being so lengthy, and of course it's going to impact them and many other businesses. Small and independent poultry producers, including those that help fulfil Christmas orders in particular, are being affected by these restrictions. The cleaning regimes has already been um, um, highlighted, but also what this means in terms of costs, um, physical costs, and obviously the time for the operations of these businesses. Um, the Minister, when he does respond, I would like a response specifically to these issues, but also what is now going to be the long-term plan. The long-term plan, avian flu, um, flu is here to stay, the implications of businesses are significant. Poultry farmers cannot be expected to face regular patterns of restrictions and disruptions to their businesses. And as ever, in paying tribute and closing my re remarks to our farmers and poultry farmers in particular, they are part of our rural communities, part of the rural backdrop to our country. But I know that the Minister will do everything to ensure that our farmers are supported during this very difficult time.